Welcome to Engineering Scale Models. I'm Jason, your host, and I do models. We're taking another look at a chip in our TTL Logic 74LS series, the 74LS14. And if you watch my 74LS04, you'll know this pretty similar here. This is a hex, so it has six units on it, and it is a Schmidt trigger. trigger inverter and the symbol looks like this with a yeah well it has this in the that in the bubble so let's try drawing it better there we go and then we'll erase that one so there we go. That's more or less. Man, I draw bad. It's more or less. So it's you know you have your A input and your Q output, and you know if you have a zero and a one, this is going to be a one and a zero. But a Schmidt trigger takes some of the the noise and the ripple out of the inverter. So if you have a signal that is going up like that, this will give you a more square wave output. So let us go to the overhead. Oh, no, not to the overhead. Let's look at the data sheet. Because that's a thing we do. There we go. Here's the data sheet. 14, you get six uh, Schmidt triggers. Here's what the Schmidt trigger looks like. A way better drawing than what I could have done. It's positive logic. And we come down here to the pinout right here. I will mark your uh, your one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, one there, and this is going to be plus five volts for us in ground right there. So that's our ground. So that's our um, pinout, and I am going to compare this with a normal hex inverter. I can drag this down here. I'll show you this is a standard hex inverter um, it's got the same pinout this is the 04 the 74 ls04 so let me go back to this so we can see the pinout and i will go to the main camera we got the pinout up there now let me show you what we have here we have the um this is the 14 and this is a 4 I have them both hooked up, they're both inverters, and I want to scope the um, the outputs of the two and see if they're any different. So let us first show you how it works. I will connect my 9 volts to my cool little power thing, and then this is my setup I put on all my testing boards. It's a, yeah, well, let's turn it on and show you. I had to turn off my um, power supply because it was giving me issues. So this is the board here and turn it on it's got a 555 timer for a clock circuit, it's got a pulse and clock circuit and it, ha and it has a program counter I can either inc increment or I can have it run through and that comes in pretty handy for working with logic but this is our chips here. Um, we have they're both on because it's inverter so this is zero input and when I add an input they both go to zero so I want to put a scope on these and see what the outputs look like so let's take we're gonna put the yellow one on the Schmidt trigger output so we're gonna plug our ground in here and we'll take the yellow one and we'll put it on pin to our output and then we'll take the pink one with a pink lead hook up our ground and we'll put it on the output of the regular Schmidt trigger and I'm gonna bring my scope up so as you can see they're both putting out a that's weird Why is 
this lot updating. There we go. This seems weird. It should update as I adjust things. Let's go back to two volts per division. Two volts per division. Well, hopefully it's hopefully it works. Let's see. Yeah, for some reason it's not virtually updating. There it goes. For some reason it's 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 let's put it in single trigger mode. There we go. So we caught the output not on this. Let's well that worked out. So Okay, so if we go this whoops, this way, and we take a look at this to see if they're the same here, let's... Okay... They look pretty similar. Okay, so this is not working on your screen, so I'm going to go to the webcam, take the scope off, and I'm going to put the webcam in front of there. So, as you can see, I am zooming in on the thing here, on the output, and they, they look pretty much the same on the output between the inverter and the this one if you look here uh, let me see if I can get a better view of that if you look here I've got to get this to work in the scope mode Okay, here we go. Now you can see it. If you look here, this is got a little bit of bump. This is the non-Schmidt trigger, and this is the um, the um, one with the Schmidt trigger. Well, I couldn't talk. So let's let's bring this. Let's go back to run stop and let's. Oh, that didn't. Oh, no, I want to go to single. Now, did that catch the rising edge? No, it didn't catch the rising edge. So, let's go to single. There we go. I caught it that time. Okay, so I'm going to get this set up and then I'm going to show you on. Well, let me just show you what I what I caught here. So there's like no update button on this thing, just to update what it looks like. So weird. So as you can see, I caught the, the actual button push and the rising edge of it. And I am going to bring the rising edge up and see what that looks like. Because we looked at the falling edge here, so.
Okay, so let's update this. Okay, so this is the rising edge at... Well, I'm sure it's going to tell me what the thing is. Um... <coughs> 100 nanosec 100 nanoseconds per division so they're they're pretty much identical on the rising edge so in this situation the Schmidt trigger isn't as helpful but let me turn the scope off and this off and this off not that off this this button this button and that button there we go let's get all that off and let me show you somewhere where it does matter here. Let's turn that off. Now, let's unlock all this. And let's put our board up. And I'll show you on this project is the rotary encoder project. And it uses a rotary encoder to um, send a clock pulse to the shift register. And I'm using a hex inverter with the Schmidt trigger um, through an RC filter to just clean up the clock edge so it's it it's a better logic signal without bounce. So that's a good use for that hex sh with the Schmidt trigger. So I like the Schmidt trigger. Um, I try to use it when I when I can. It you know cleans up the signal a little bit. Uh, this was a bit rambly and a bit messing around with the computer software. I'm sorry about that. So that is going to do it for this video. You can check me out on social media. You can also try to support me on Patreon if you can. Also, there will be a GoFundMe linked in the description to help me afford some better equipment to do some awesome projects. Thank you so much and have a fantastic day.